Hey there, just making a video to show off this thing that I've been working on a little bit in my spare time here and there. Uh, one of the problems with uh, app development that I find, or one of the challenges, is that it's really hard to for me to generate all the different image assets and all the different resolutions and sizes that I need. Uh, and I know there's ways to do this in like Sketch and other apps like that, but you know, for me as a developer who's not very good with graphics, uh, something I've always wanted is an automated process that does this for me, where I can basically give uh, you know, the process, some PNG files or some vector files, and it's going to figure out to put them in the right sizes and, and do what I need it to do. So I've been working on a NuGet package, uh, which contains a custom MS build task, which is going to actually go ahead and, and run when you do your build and go through and resize things for you based on a configuration file that you feed it. Uh, I'm calling it right now the resizitizer. And I'm um, just going to show you what it looks like, how it's working so far. So first of all, you install the resizitizer NuGet package. Uh, this needs to be in one of your projects. It doesn't need to be in all of your projects. I mean, you could certainly put it in all of them and put different config files for each project. Uh, but I like to put it in my, my common project, so my PCL. I mean, if you're using a shared project, um, you know, you're going to have to find a different place to put it, obviously. But the main point is it really only needs to be in one spot. Um, so I've got that NuGet package installed in my PCL project here. And then I've got this um, configuration file, this YAML file, linked into this project. And we're going to have to go ahead and set the whoop, set the build action to this resizitizer config build action. And this might not show up right as soon as you install the NuGet package. Sometimes you have to reload your, your project or restart the IDE for, to get it to show up because it's in part of the, the targets file uh, from the NuGet package. Um, but once it shows up, you can set your build action to that, and let's just take a look at what the config file actually looks like. Now you can have multiple config items specified, so here I've got one for Android and one for iOS. Um, there's nothing really you know, specific about each different platform. Um, you can specify as many different config sets as you want. It's just usually convenient to break them up into platforms. Um, so this config file has a few different things in it. First you'll see this output base path. And this path is relative to the actual location of this uh, resizitizer YAML config file. And if I was to go in and show you just my, my finder setup of, of where that actually is, uh, we've got uh, this image assets folder. Here's the config file. We've got our, our assets here, this SVG and a, a PNG. And then we've got, you know, this is our project that we installed it into. This is the iOS project and the Android project. So just remember that. The config file stuff is relative to the, the actual config file itself. So in this case, my output base path for the Android stuff that I want to, to actually generate is going to be the resources folder of that Android project. Um, as you can see here, you know, there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, I've got a few, one drawable folder, a couple other things here, but my goal is to have all the different drawable resolutions created for me. Um, so I set my base path to this resources folder, and then I have to actually go ahead and specify the assets that I want to resize. Um, and I can specify many assets here, it doesn't have to be just one, but in this case I'm going to work with this SVG file, this happy.svg, and uh, again that comes from that um, source uh, asset folder that we looked at with, by the config file. So relative to the config file path, um, this is where the actual source asset comes from. Then I've got this size uh, property. And this is probably the most confusing part of the setup. I haven't figured out maybe the best way to explain this. Uh, but basically, if you're resizing a, an SVG or a PNG, um, you don't necessarily want to care about what the, the source size of that file is. Um, obviously, if it's a PNG, it needs to be you know, bigger than the largest resolution you want to resize it to. Otherwise, you're going to have um, some lossy resizing going on and you don't want to do that. Um, but if you have an SVG, you know, rather than specifying all of the different ratios based on what like the viewport size of that SVG is or what the actual resolution of say the PNG file is, I've come up with this concept of this nominal size I like to call it. So I want to say that, you know, the baseline size of this SVG is 100 by 100. And I want that size to be what's used uh, to calculate the ratios for the other sizes to generate. Uh, and so, like I said, I like to call this nominal size. I mean, you can think of this as like the normal size. So for iOS, this is like your 1x resolution. Uh, and for Android, you know, this would be most like uh, likened to the MDPI, which is sort of your baseline. Um, you know, pixels match the actual DPI resolution. Um, so that's what we're going to go ahead and use here. Then I specify all the outputs that I want. I can specify a whole bunch of them here. Um, for Android, you know, here are all the common ones that we would see. So I've got... Uh, the path, which this path is relative to the output base path. 
Um, so they don't have to specify this whole long path every time. And so since it's relative to that, it's going to go ahead and make folders for you know, drawable, MDPI, HDPI, et cetera, et cetera. And then I set the ratio for those. And again, these are all based off the 100 by 100. So the MDPI image is going to be scaled at 100 by 100. You know, it's not actually scaling it. Uh, the HDPI is going to be 150 by 150 when it's done, and then 200 by 200, and so on and so on. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, and then we come down to iOS. And on iOS, it's a little bit different. Um, I mean, the same thing here with the output path for specifying it in our iOS folder for our project here. So I don't have anything really in my resources folder here right now. So that's where we want to go. I'm going to use a PNG instead as the source file. And like I said, like this PNG is actually, if we were to look at the information about it, it's actually um, 474 by 474. So I don't actually want to figure out, you know, what the 2x, uh, I mean, it's easier possibly, but I want to figure out what the 2x of, you know, 36 by 36 is to generate. So I'm going to say my nominal size for that file is 36 by 36. So my 1.0 ratio is going to get generated, you know, at 36 by 36. I don't need to do anything special with the name. The base output path is fine in this case, so I don't have to specify the path. Uh, and then I want to generate our at 2x and our at 3x, so I can specify a file suffix to append. And in this case, we use the at 2x um, to, to give us the right name for iOS. And of course, that's going to be a two times ratio. And we do the same with at 3x. So this is how the config file looks. It's pretty simple once you understand this the concept of nominal sizing, I think, and that all of the paths are relative. So once we've got that all set up, we can go ahead here and actually do a build. And this is going to go and execute our build task. You can see here it um, ran the resizitize target. It found our config file that we specified in our project. And now if we go and look at our folders, if we just go and set our solution to display all files in here, we can go look at our iOS folder first. So now we've got, you know, this happy, this happy 2x and happy 3x all generated. And I'm just going to um, pull one up here and let's look at the, the info for it. This should be, yeah, 108 by 108. So that's, you know, 36 times 3, right? Um, so we're getting the, the images size properly. And then if we go back to our Android project here, we've got all of our new resource folders created, right? So we've got the HDPI, uh, which I think is probably, yeah, 150 by 150, so it's one and a half times. So we've got everything all created for us. Now, as of now, this thing isn't going in and actually making, um, you know, actually adding these as resources to your projects for you. That's something I want to look at doing. Uh, the other thing is it's going to generate these every single time. So there's no concept of caching the original source files. So I need to do some kind of timestamping thing where, you know, it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't try and regenerate the files if the source file hasn't changed since the last time. Um, so there's a few twi uh, tweaks here that I want to make, but I um, just want to get this out there and show you and maybe get some feedback. So if you have any feedback for me, let me know. Thanks.